If you use laboratory reactor pressure vessels in your experiments, it's important to understand what conditions increase the hazards associated with use so you can prevent dangerous ruptures from occurring. Four conditions you want to avoid are improper pressure vessel assembly or maintenance, excessive temperature, excessive loading, and the formation of explosive materials. This rupture of a laboratory reactor pressure vessel cup was caused by improper assembly. Before starting any experiment using pressure vessels, carefully read all vessel manufacturer's documentation. Familiarize yourself with the maximum temperature and working pressure for the vessel you are using. Where available, identify the charging limits for each chemical and vessel size in the manufacturer's literature. Defective temperature controls or operator inattention can be the cause of dangerous overheating in an oven. In order to prevent dangerous overheating, the best practice is to use this high temperature limit controller. In addition to that, you should regularly check your heating devices during a reaction. The pressure increase in a laboratory reactor headspace is dependent on many factors. Pure water, for example, exhibits a condensable vapor phase. Increasing temperature can lead to excessive pressure, either because the expanding water fills the vessel's headspace, or the increasing steam pressure in the headspace exceeds the vessel's allowable operating pressure. For heterogeneous mixtures, consider the effects of temperature and pressure. Non-condensable gases may evolve into a vessel's headspace. For example, concentrated acids such as hydrochloric, nitric or aqua regia release gases at elevated temperatures. The solubility of these gases is reduced as the temperature rises. Rising temperature adds non-condensable gases to the headspace. The resulting pressure increase is a function of both temperature and the initial loading charge. The chemical decomposition of samples or gases under elevated temperature and or pressure can increase the number of moles in the headspace very rapidly. When all parameters are known, the internal pressure increase can be calculated or gleaned from reference material. The amount of liquid present, the chemical concentration, and the free headspace above the liquid will all have a bearing on the pressure developed in a closed vessel. Review the charging limits for your vessel in the manufacturer's documentation. Limits for a specific chemical or combination may be posted. Charging limits vary depending on chemicals used. Always evaluate the chemistry that you are trying to achieve with special consideration for gaseous byproducts that may affect the pressure inside the vessel. Some chemicals are prohibited from use in pressure vessels. Do not treat fats, fatty acids, glycerin, and similar materials with nitric acid in pressure vessels. Do not treat cellulosic materials with mixed nitric and sulfuric acids. When nitric acid reacts with certain organic substances, it can generate materials with explosive properties capable of destroying the pressure vessel, even when present in quantities well within the normal recommended charging limits. Similarly, because of its unpredictable nature, do not use perchloric acid or hydrazine in these vessels. Avoid reactions which are highly exothermic or which may be expected to release large volumes of gas. Heating chemicals inside a closed vessel in an oven can result in some of the highest gas or supercritical fluid pressures encountered in a laboratory. Pressure relief or safety rupture discs are provided in most laboratory reactor pressure vessels to protect the outer vessel and the operator from unexpected or dangerously high internal pressures. The cup and lid of this internal high pressure vessel is made of polytetrafluoroethylene, or PTFE. PTFE has a tendency to creep or flow under pressure or load. This tendency is present even at room temperature, and it is accentuated at higher temperatures. The extent of the creep effect will be roughly proportional to the maximum operating pressure. PTFE cup and lid lifetimes as short as 10 to 30 runs have been reported. Here, an overpressure may be released through a small opening in the pressure plate. After breaking through a sandwich of a corrosion disc and rupture disc over the PTFE lid, Pressure deforms the PTFE lid. When the extruded PTFE dimple broke through the metal discs, the maximum allowable operating pressure was exceeded. It is time to replace the PTFE cup, lid, and rupture discs. Additional pressure extrudes the PTFE dimple further until it violently releases the stored kinetic energy in a rupture. The chemical contents violently eject, which can be dangerous to your hearing and health. 
Physical damage to ovens is common in such rupture incidents. Store all the parts of a vessel together to avoid mismatches. Due to PTFE flow, once a PTFE cup and lid is pressurized, it becomes a uniquely matching pair. Using unmatched pairs of cups and lids will cause leaks. Not all pressure vessels use a PTFE insert. Internal wetted parts of a pressure vessel have to be constructed resistant to corrosive materials at the expected operating pressure. Each alloy has its own physical strength and temperature characteristics, as well as its own unique resistance to certain corrosive materials. All of these factors must be considered when making a selection. The following factors have contributed to avoidable incidents. Inappropriate pressure vessel assembly, liquid overfilling, filling with incompatible chemicals, overloading, the formation of explosives, and oven malfunction or errors in setting oven temperatures. Summer students and students from other laboratories who borrow chemical reactor pressure vessels are the least familiar with safe operation. Novice users must be directly supervised in experimental design, vessel assembly, and temperature setting until they exhibit full understanding and proficiency. We hope that you can take the information we've provided and the lessons we've learned and work safely inside the lab. If you have additional questions or would like assistance, please contact the Office for Research Safety.